All right, so what's going on? Let's take a look at finding the inverse of a quadratic function. We've got f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 14 for x greater than or equal to 3. All right, so before we get started, let's just look at this x greater than or equal to 3. Okay, well, I know this is a parabola that opens upward, right? And the vertex, because if you do the minus b over 2a, you'll get the x-coordinate of the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 3. I don't care what the y-coordinate is, okay? What's important here is the, the x greater than or equal to 3. Well, if you look at this and you draw a horizontal line through that graph, it intersects that graph in more than one spot. And if you remember by the horizontal line test, if a horizontal line intersects a function in more than one spot, that means it's not one-to-one, -one, so that means it doesn't have an inverse. Okay. Well, what this x greater than or equal to 3 does is that says, okay, we're only working with values larger than 3. So we're only working with this part of the graph. So we're not even going to use that part. And you can see, once we've gotten rid of this side over here, it's now one-to-one. -one. So what we've done here is we've restricted the domain, okay? And that's going to that's going to be important later on in the problem. All right, so before we get started, the fir first thing we're going to need to do before we find the inverse is we're going to have to turn this into its vertex form. So I'm going to rewrite this f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 12x. I'm going to put that in parentheses and then plus 14. Okay, so you can probably see what I'm fixing to do. I'm going to uh, complete the square. All right, but remember you can't complete the square if you have a number in front of x squared other than 1. Remember you got to have a 1 in front of your x squared. So what we're going to do here is we're going to factor out a 2. Okay. And then remember, I have to half the 6. So half of 6 is 3. And then I square 3. That gives me 9. So that's plus 9. And since I added 9 in here, I'm going to have to come out here and subtract 18. Now, why did I subtract 18? Well, I added the 9 in here, but that's really like adding what? 2 times 9, which is 18. So since I added 18, I have to come out here and subtract 18. All right, so now I've got f of x is equal to 2 times, and that's going to be x minus 3 squared, that factors, minus 4. Okay? So now I'm going to take the inverse of this thing. All right, so just gave myself a little more room. All right, so remember how to find the inverse. Okay, so we change the f of x to y. All right, and so that's y equals 2 times x minus 3 squared minus 4. And then we swap the x's and y's, so I get x equals 2 times y minus 3 squared minus 4. Well, and then what do we do? Well, then we, we solve for y. Okay, so I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Okay. So that is going to give me x plus 4 equals 2 times y minus 3 squared. And then I'm going to divide both, both sides or divide everything by 2. So divide by 2. So that's going to give me 1 half x plus 2 equals y minus 3 squared okay and I think I think what I might do this 0.5 I think I'm just going to rewrite 0.5 
I'm, I'm this one half. I think I'm going to rewrite one half as 0.5. Not a really, not really a big deal if you do it or not. I'm just, you know, just avoid having the fraction under the radical. I'd rather have the decimal. That's the only reason. All right. So now we got to do what? Square root properties. Take the square root of both sides. So this is the square root of 0.5x plus 2 equals y minus 3. Now, don't forget this part. We did the square root property. Students are always forgetting this. It's plus or minus. Don't forget that. And so then I need to add 3 to both sides. And so that is going to give me 3 plus or minus the square root of 0.5x plus 2 equals y. All right. So now I'm going to take this and split it up into two, two separate functions. So that's y equals 3 plus the square root of 0.5x plus 2 or y equals 3 minus the square root of 0.5x plus 2. All right, so it's one of these. It can't be both of them. Which one's the inverse? See if you can make a guess before I tell you the answer. All right, so my inverse is what? Well, if we go back up here and look at this where we restricted the domain, Remember, this is the domain of this function here. It's been restricted to be x greater than or equal to 3. Let's write that down, down here. Greater than or equal to 3, which is the same thing as 3 to infinity, right? So this is the domain of the function. Well, if you remember with inverses, the domain of the function is the range of the inverse. All right. So which one of these has a range of three to infinity? Well, hopefully you can see that it's this one. Okay. Well, remember whenever you take the square root of a number, you're going to get zero or a positive. And if you take three plus positive, that's going to give you values larger than 3. So there's your 3 to infinity. So we know it's this one. Okay. But if you look if you look at this, y equals 3 minus the square root of 0.5x plus 2. Okay. Well, let's look at that. 3 minus, okay, 3 minus a positive number is going to give you values. All right, sorry about that. Battery was running down, had all kinds of crap pop up on the screen, so I think I got it fixed. All right, so we got 3 minus a positive number, okay? So that's 3 minus a positive. That's going to give us values less than 3, okay? So we know it's not this one. So our solution would be this one here, 3 plus square root 0.5x plus 2. And this is our answer. So hope the video helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.